So this is a really interesting topic, and it's one that I kind of like for today because of how it correlates with the actual games we're going to see. Yes, the Red Wings and the Carolina Hurricanes will play in about four hours after this video is uploaded, but I will be transparent with you. This video is being recorded the morning of Wednesday, April 13th. So about 24 hours ish before it's actually going to be uploaded, I'm sitting in front of the microphone talking to you about this subject. I have a trip later on in the weekend, so I have to pre-record some stuff, make sure that the show is ready and locked and loaded before I set out to go. But when it comes to today's video topic, hey, let's talk about the Red Wings and let's talk about this mailbag here on The Athletic, published by Max Boltman. Now, if you're a frequent Red Wings consumer of media, then you're probably familiar with these, especially if you do have The Athletic, but this is the recent mailbag from April 6th. Which Red Wings prospects could be NHLers soon? How much blame does Jeff Blaschel merit? Here is your Red Wings mailbag. The link will be in the description, as always, if you want to go ahead and read this and you have The Athletic, but because it is paid for material, we're not going to screenshot anything from this article. Instead, we're going on to Spectre's Hockey from, when was this, April 9th? Okay, April 9th. So three days ago for, actually no, four days ago for me, five days ago for you because you're watching this video the day after I'm recording it. Let's go over what exactly the summary is here for Boltman and all these mailbag questions he gets asked by Red Wings fans. Take a look at what Boltman writes when it comes to the Red Wings and signing free agents. He does not expect Wings GM Steve Eiserman to pursue a big-ticket UFA such as John Klingberg this summer. A good second-line center option via free agency could be Carolina's Vincent Trocek, who wouldn't break the bank or be a signing that goes over five years. This is the Spectre's Note part of the article. It'll be interesting to see what Eiserman does this summer. He's been building patiently with promising youth over the past three years. Nevertheless, the Wings are at a point where he could attempt to accelerate the process via trade or free agency. Then again, he could also decide a coaching change would be more beneficial too. And yeah, we've talked about the idea of a coaching change. I think a lot of Red Wings fans kind of know where they stand on that. But when it comes to this center option idea that is thrown around here by Max Boltman on The Athletic. Let's go over Carolina Hurricanes forward Vincent Trocek, what exactly his overall profile provides, and whether or not he could be a nice addition to the Red Wings via free agency. Again, I said this is going to be cool because these two teams, Carolina and Detroit, are playing each other four hours after this video will be uploaded. So if you are paying attention to this video and you're like, hey, I kind of like the sound of that, I like what this guy provides, then you'll have yourselves a first-hand opportunity to scout his services and see what he's about in about four hours here if you're going to be watching that Red Wings and Hurricanes game. Vincent Trocek is a 28-year-old forward, so he isn't necessarily young. He isn't in that same age range as a Raymond or a Sider or even a Larkin or a Bertuzzi. He's slightly older than all of these guys. He's 5'10", 183, a right-handed center, signed on till the end of this season with the Hurricanes at a $4.75 million cap hit. He was a third-round draftee by the Florida Panthers back in 2011, and after some extended development time in the OHL and the AHL, he eventually became a mainstay player on the Panthers and their center core. In the mid-2010s, he started out as a 50-point center, eventually becoming a 75-point center in 2017-2018. That still serves as his career high today, after posting up multiple 30-point seasons in 50 games with the Panthers and then getting traded over to Carolina. This was a pretty big haul for the Florida Panthers as they netted four assets, Hala, Walmark, Lusterinen, and Chase Prisky, all for one guy, and immediately afterwards you saw the impact that Trocek had in his team. He had 43 points in 47 games played last year in the 2020-2021 season for Carolina, and this season he's at 47 points in 74 games. Now, to be fair, he is kind of declining in terms of that production from last year. He's only on pace for 52 points in 82 games as I'm talking to you right now, but of course, if he scores a hat-trick later today against Detroit, then things are going to change on that point production pace. Either way, though, he's not on pace for the 75 points that he was able to accomplish four years ago, but that's kind of okay, because Trocek is still an all-round goal-scoring, playmaking, two-way upholding second-line center option for most NHL teams. He's just a solid hockey player all around, but with the Carolina Hurricanes and their entire cap situation you're going to have to look at, 
it's not only just Vincent Trocek you're going to have to resign for 2022-2023. You also have some other pretty significant names like Nino Niederreiter, Max Domi, Derek Stepan, Martin Natchez is going to be an RFA, and then you have your entire decor pretty much, aside from Slave and Shea and Pesci. It's going to be pretty complicated seeing where the Carolina Hurricanes go with the $20 million in cap space they have. Whether or not they keep Trocek is up in the air, but if you want to go out there and say that this team is going to let him go, are the Red Wings the next best option? Going over to the Wings and their entire situation here, they don't really need to worry about cap space. That's been kind of the thing the past few seasons that Steve Eiserman has pretty much effectively neutralized any concerns with the cap that this team could have. You saw last offseason, I believe it was, last offseason or two offseasons ago, something like that, there were so many guys that were all expiring at the same time, and Steve Eiserman carefully picked and chose who he was going to keep onto this team, who he was going to acquire, and now you have yourselves a Red Wing squad that is looking pretty good, but of course they're not a contender-level team just yet. Raymond and Sider are good pieces that are getting better. Larkin, Bertuzzi, you could say the same thing. There are other players in the prospect system of the Red Wings right now that are going to crack this team sooner rather than later, and when that happens and you see the Red Wings slowly start to build themselves up towards being a wildcard bubble team, you gotta ask yourself in advance, okay, if we feel like the Red Wings could be this competitive sometime down the line, do you want to maybe sign a five, six million dollar second line center option in Vincent Trocek that could play behind a Dylan Larkin and be just an absolute force down there? Now, I get it, you can kind of go out there and say, oh, is Trocek really going to accept that amount of money? Because, I mean, look at him, a few years ago he was at 70 points, and last year he had himself a point-per-game year. And even though that is true, you have to go off of the season that this guy was coming off of, which is this 52-point in 82-game season, which is what he's accomplished with the Hurricanes this season. Now, unfortunately for Trocek, he isn't on top of the team like he was last year with Aho and Svechnikov in point production. You have yourselves that first line with Toivo Teravainen that has really taken over and done a good chunk of the scoring here for this team. Trocek is a good player, but he's not really that number one center option that could demand upwards of seven, eight, nine million dollars a year. So for this kind of player, I would understand it if he went out there and only fetched a five and a half or a six million AAV contract for a few seasons because he is 28 years old, he's in the prime of his career technically, and if you really want to say the Red Wings are going to be competitive, let's say 2024 or 2025, that's when they start really being a wild card team. Signing on a player, bringing him onto the squad like Vincent Trocek, who could be a pretty good veteran presence while also having a great second-line scoring touch, could be an addition that makes sense to me. Now, would I necessarily do that? It really depends on where you see the team going. It really depends on the vision, because if you're going to max out the Red Wings timeline and say, okay, no, they're going to be competitive in 2026 or 2027, all of a sudden you're waiting four more years. Trocek is going to be in his early 30s. Do you want to go out there and use the amount of money right now that you have available to you to sign a guy when you're not really going to use that player and his services to the best of what it can offer in that time frame. It wouldn't really make sense for him to sign that kind of contract. There needs to be a pitch where Steve Eiserman sits him down and says, yeah, okay, look, this is what we see with our team. This is where we feel we can go. And if you want to jump on and help us out when we try to contend for a wild card in 2023 or 2024, then here's five and a half million dollars. It's something that I could totally understand if you put it in the right circumstances, you know? So, for Vincent Trocek, let me know in the comments all your thoughts about this player and the services he provides. I think he's a solid hockey player. He does everything pretty well. He can score, he can make plays, he can play defensively as well. He's a pretty all-round center option that could slot in nicely behind Dylan Larkin. Not to mention the experience and the leadership that the guy goes out there and provides. He's played under Rod Brindamore for the past little while here, so I think that definitely does provide a few lessons here and there that you can apply elsewhere in your hockey knowledge world. If you're a Carolina Hurricanes fan, what do you think about the idea of Trocek leaving your team in free agency? Is that something that a lot of Hurricanes fans are content with? Is that something that you're kind of already having in the back of your mind that, okay, this guy did not get traded at the trade deadline, he's still on our team, he's helping us out, but he expires next season? We don't really know if he's going to stick around for next season or if he goes to some other team. Let me know in the comments, is that something that you're kind of concerned about and why that is? Because if you are concerned, then okay, what is it about Trocek's game that you're going to miss on your team if he does leave? And if you're not concerned, then are you just kind of content with the idea of him leaving or are you confident that he's actually going to resign? Let me know in the comments, all your thoughts about Trocek. If you're a Wings fan as well, 
we're gonna have an opportunity to see this guy suit up in about four hours, so keep your eyes out for Vincent Trocek. He is number, what is he, number 16 on the Carolina Hurricanes, and see how he plays, because if you feel like that kind of style could resonate with you and what you think the Red Wings should be able to build for next season, then hey, let me know in the comments as well what your opinions are about that. I hope you enjoyed this video of Trolls 99. Links will be in the description to the articles that we pulled from, of course, as always, and bye.